child to be specially remembered this morning in prayer. So we sure want to all to do that. The doctors don't even know to give it some kind of a name, but I think they just made up one to give it. They, they didn't know what it was. And but Christ knows what it is. Amen. I can tell you what it is. It's a devil. Amen. The devil. Yeah. What name they want to give him, uh, that's up to them, but that's what he is. He's an evil spirit. Now let's all together, once together, now only believe. Everyone come right out. Father, seemingly I just can't get it off my mind. The little girl there that's a dying. She's somebody's darling. She's your creation. And Satan is robbing her of her young life. I pray that in Christ's name that you'll stay the hand of death. Drive back that enemy. Thou, Lord, who can make the Red Sea the wall up on either side and give the children of Israel thy heritage a safe journey across the sea and into the promised land. God, we pray today that you'll move back every obstacle and let the child live. It's been given to us to ask, and as a group of people believing in thee, we ask in Jesus' name for the healing of the child. Amen. Today, it's uh, with a grateful heart that I, I come to you again in the name of the Lord Jesus. I come home just a little early from Louisiana. Um, thought maybe if I got here for Sunday, I could have Sunday school. And then the weather was so awfully hot there. That we, this would be mild and cool this morning inside Louisiana. You'll never sit in a building like this with no more than a fan in Louisiana, it'd be air conditioned or you'd be fainting. And so I come sort of to get just a day or two's rest before leaving now, right away to northern Saskatchewan next week. And um, that's up at Prince Albert. That's as far as roads goes in the world. From the other side, he crossed all the way over the world without any more roads. And nothing but Indians and Eskimos uh, back in the interior, a place where we go this time. So, we have many people will be at this meeting from all over Canada. Some of them will come from the West Coast, they say, coming over. And I certainly desire the prayers of you people that God will meet with us and give us an exceeding, abundant, great meeting for His glory. It's been some four or five years since I've been in Canada. And I have some real royal friends there that are very fine people. And so they're very uh, loyal to go to church. No matter how cold it is, they'll wrap up in a blanket and sit on a bobsled and drive a horse for 30 miles to get to go to church. They'll walk through the snow drifts and everything else, young and old. They all group together. One family gets the other, and they start walking, and they go. It's... It's the sacrifice that they make is what causes them to get so much out of the service. When there's no sacrifice, there's not very much to the service. So you have to really get out and do something that hurts real bad. You have to lay aside some things and stop the work and do this or that to get to go to church and show God that you love Him and you make a sacrifice to go. It's then when you get something out of it. It's just like my kiddies. Billy Paul, I thought I would, I didn't get anything when I was a kid. Mama used to get maybe one sack of candy and she'd measure it out, two or three pieces to each one. 
Maybe for Christmas we get a little tin horn or a little cap pistol or something. And I've seen other kids with sleighs and bicycles and things, good clothes and warm jackets. And I, I, I just made me feel so bad. I said, if I ever have any children of my own, I'm going to do everything for them I could. Well, I would be willing to go hungry to get something for my kids. And when I lived, when Billy was just a little boy, I'd get him a little tricycle and I'd get him everything and Meaty would try everything to sacrifice her own clothes and things to get him something. But you know what? We begin to find out I got him a little tricycle and a little bow and arrow and everything. I'd find him with a, a spoon or a stick out in the backyard digging somewhere. Yeah. I said, the next ones won't be like that. See? You just give anybody everything right on their hand, they don't want it. It's something you have to sacrifice for. And that's the way salvation is. Amen. It's a complete sacrifice. It is, Brother Roy. It's, it's a sacrifice that you have to do every day something to, uh, to get close to God and to do something. And I know it's a sacrifice for you all this morning sitting in this hot building. As we sit here, let's keep our minds on the greatest sacrifice that mankind ever was given Amen. to do. That was Jesus Christ when he was charged to come to the earth to die in our stead. Not only that, but his soul descended into hell and was there for three days and nights. And on the third day he arose and now ascended on high, sitting at the right hand of God in heaven, making intercessions upon our confessions of his uh, atonement and his grace that's been provided for us. Now up, in the, up there where we're going, there'll be many people, real poor, Real poor will have to sell one of their cows, two or three of their sheep, or something, get to come to the meeting. The old Eskimo will probably bring out some of his skins and sell them that he really needed for his family to come out. The Indian trader will have to do the same. Now, we can at least pray for those people, can't we? Amen. And we pray that God will give them a great thing. Now, it's hot. I don't want to keep you long. And I want us this morning to fix our minds just before we have prayer for the sick upon church and its condition. And now I feel that a few days ago that a message to the church was given to me at Streetport, Louisiana. And I, I believe it's the conditions of the church. And we're going to face God with it this morning and pray and ask God to help us. Don't aim to take the same approach. But ask God to help us in this day that we're living. And just before, this is a grand old Bible. But just in there lays the contents of eternal life. And remember, the Word is God. God is no more than His Word. And we're no more than our Word. And if we make, of course, now you and I in a different stand, sense, because we can, we can say, well, I'll do a certain thing. We mean that in our heart. But circumstances can arise that we can't, we can't do that, what we said we would do. But God can't do that because He's infant and He knows everything, everything that ever was, will be. Or, so He can't make a statement unless He knows He can back it up. And Abraham... When he was a hundred years old, he called those things which were not as though they were. I'm saying this as encouragement to the ones that's going to be prayed for, the sick. Abraham called the things that were not as though they were, counting that he who had made the promise was able to perform or keep that which he had promised. Now, when God told Abraham when he was six, 75 and Sarah was 65 that they were going to have a baby, why, it was altogether impossible. And he believed that and looked for the baby and counted the baby as good as being there for 25 years before the baby ever come. And Abraham was 100 when the baby was born and Sarah was 90 because he believed him. And call the things which are not as though they were. 
Now that's to the sick and afflicted to be prayed for. No matter what your troubles are, whether you're, what kind of diseases you got, how bad off you are, when you accept Christ, His Word, then you call the things which are as though they were not if they're contrary to God's Word. Now God said, prayer of faith shall save the sick. Well, if God said that, that settles it. Then let's put our minds, hopes, and act as though it's already done. Amen. It's already finished when we accept it. Salvation is the same way. We believe it, accept it, believe it in our heart, walk up before God and accept Christ as our personal Savior, and accept Him if you're here this morning and a sinner and not saved, and you want to be healed, you're sick, first seek the Lord. Accept Him as your Savior, then that disease will work right out. Amen. Ever what it is, just put your whole thought to everything that you have on the whole man, Christ Jesus. Amen. Everything else will be all right. Amen. So now, keep your mind on that, because I said these few words for those who are sick and afflicted, so that I'm going to speak this morning to the church and the condition. For I feel that although divine healing is marvelous, but when I was in Shreveport, I only had about three healing services out from the down there, three or maybe four to most out of 11 days. It's more essential to preach to the souls of man than it is to put so much time on divine healing. Although the people who are sick and needy, God can heal them, and it's already been vindicated the world around that He does. But the main thing now is to the soul, which will never die. Amen. The body will die. But the soul will never die, and we must keep that level and straight with God. I've often said this. I want everything done. For when I come down to the river that morning, I don't want any trouble there. <laughs> I want to have my ticket in my hand. Amen. Waiting for my name. And I want to say as Paul of old, Brother Creech, I know him in the power of his resurrection. That when he calls from among the dead, I'll come out. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. So now he who's the author of the book, let's bow our heads and hearts to him just a moment. And God our Father, we come to thee now to ask that you will open your word to us. We can pull back the pages, but only the Holy Spirit can open the Word. So open it this morning to us, Father, and give us the exceeding abundance of Thy grace. Amen. We wait upon Thee, and may the Holy Spirit get into the Word and give it out to human lips, to human hearts, and may He take it and place it in every heart just as we have need. And when the services is over, we're ready to turn to our homes. We'll humbly bow our heads and give thee thanks and praise for all that we have learned of thee and what thou hast done for us. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. <clears throat> the reading of the Word. Over in St. John, the first chapter, you who have Bibles and would like to read with me or mark it down for a text. And we read the text from the Word and then let, praying that the Holy Spirit will take the context out of the Word to give to us. We can read it. We who are able to read can read it. But only God can bring the context out. The text can be read because it is His Word. But then the, the context has to be given by God. Now, in St. John, first chapter, and let's begin at the 28th verse and read down to the 32nd inclusive. These things were done, see, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. And this is he of whom I said, After me cometh the man, which is preferred before me, for he was before me. 
and I knew him not. But he, but that he should be manifested to Israel, therefore I am come baptizing with water. John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. I want to read that again, that last verse. 32nd verse. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode up on him. And may the Lord add his blessings to the word. I want you to try to, to catch every word if we can. Can you hear me all right way back? All right, can you hear me back there? If you can, you raise up your hand. That's good. Now, I want to speak to you this morning on, on parable, on some way that even the, the most unchurched person in here would be able to understand. Now, we come to church to better ourselves. We come to make ourselves better people, better Christians, better citizens, better fathers, better mothers, better neighbors. We come because Christ has told us if we would come ask anything in His name where we are assembled together, as many as two or three, He would be with us and would grant it to us. So what could be any more uh, be any better to us today than to know that we have at the church for to embetter ourselves, to broaden our understanding. How many would say, that's what I'm here for? Let's see. I, I want a better understanding. And uh, we can't, we can't have a better understanding unless it, and if we're going to have an understanding of God, it must come out of God's Word. For the Word is what God gave us to feed our hungry souls. And the Holy Spirit was sent to take the Word of God and to feed us by the Word. You see it? See, we, the Holy Spirit is sent from God to take the Word of God and to give it to us as we have need. Amen. Now, I'm so glad that God made a provision like that, aren't you? Amen. That He would feed us. Amen. We are the sheep of His pastor. We're going to speak on that in a little bit. The sheep. And we're the threefold being of God. And when He can have the complete control of us, He can lead us and guide us. Now, it so pleased God that when He sent Jesus to the earth, that it pleased Him to represent Him as an animal. And that animal was the Lamb. Way back in the beginning in the Garden of Eden in the four shadows of the coming of Jesus, God sacrificed or had a lamb to be a substitutionary offering in the four shadows of the coming of Christ. Now I've often wondered why that God would foreshadow Christ as an animal, as a beast. But we come to find out that the lamb, the reason he chose a lamb, a lamb is the meekest and most gentlest of all the creatures there is on earth. There's nothing any more meeker and gentler than a little lamb. So innocent. Not self-sustaining. It, it's not arrogant. It's a gentle, meek little creature. 
And when God was going to represent Christ to the world, He represented Him in a lamb. Now, but when God, Father God, Jehovah, was going to represent Himself from heaven, He was represented in the most meekest, humblest of all the fowls that fly in heaven. That is, the dove. There's no gentler bird than the dove. I made quite a study on bird life and on wildlife. And the dove is a very odd bird from any other bird that flies to heaven. The dove is a, a, a lover. A dove is gentle. And a dove has no gall. It's the only in the bird family that doesn't have a gall. That's the reason you never see a dove anywhere, but around where there's grain and seed. Now, the, in the ark there was a dove. And the dove is represented in many places in the Bible as symbols of the Holy Spirit. And also the lamb is represented in many places in the Bible as Christ. In the Revelation, all the way back to Genesis. And so is the dove. And in the book of Genesis, the dove was in the ark, sitting on the roost with the, with the rest of the fowls of the air. And one of them was a raven, a crow. And a crow is one of the meanest birds there is. A crow and a jaybird, I guess, is about the meanest birds that we can find. The crow is a very long life bird. And he lives, they are claimed for sometimes two or three hundred years. That a crow would. A parrot lives longer than that. But a dove is one animal or one bird that doesn't have a gall. Now the crow could sit over here and eat on a dead carcass. You'll never see the dove around that dead carcass. She can't stand it. The stench of it in her nose. She couldn't stand it. It would make her sick. They just simply can't stand anything that's deteriorating, rotting. They can't stand it. So she couldn't eat it. If she would eat it, it would immediately kill the dove. Because what digests the food is the overflow of the gall into the stomach, which digests the food. And if there's no gall to go in there to make up this, then it would kill the dove. So you'll always find the dove around where there's something clean. Something that's wholesome. Now the crow is different. Now just notice the crow being a type of the hypocrite. The crow can sit over there on the, on the dead carcass and eat just as much as he wants to and fly right out in the field and eat wheat too. But the dove can't eat wheat and then fly over on the dead carcass. So a hypocrite a man can be a hypocrite and both eat spiritual things and good things and bad things. But a real born-again Christian cannot tolerate the things that's wrong and only can eat from the good things. Notice that. When you see a fellow that can go to the dance, go out and drink, Go out and live in sin. Come back to the church and maybe shout just as much as a saint. What it is, he's a scavenger. He can eat both rotten things and good things. But the real Christian cannot tolerate those things anymore. For he's passed from death to life. And immediately would condemn him so. The very thoughts of it till it would condemn him to hit turn his face and walk away. Oh, what a picture. Now, the lamb is a very gentle little fella. He doesn't he can't help himself. He isn't self reliant because he can't help himself. Here some time ago, I was going through a pasture when I used to patrol. And I found a little lamb. And all of them had got away from him somehow. And he's all wound up in a little 
bunch of bob wire. And a poor little fellow was laying there bleeding and bleeding. And I come by and I see him way up. About a half a mile up was a whole herd of sheep. Now he laid right there and the crows would have been picking in his eyes pretty soon if we hadn't have got him out. But I unwound the little fellow, picked him up in my arms. He never refused. He laid real quiet. I picked him up in my arms. First, first time perhaps a human being had ever had their hands on him, but he was gentle. He was willing to be led. He was willing to be helped. I hope you see it. He was willing not to try to resist or to kick back or to bite. Lambs don't kick back. They don't bite. They just humble themselves. And this little fellow, I packed him up and set him down in the rest of the sheep. And a few minutes, his mammy found him, how happy he was. Now, how typical that is of the Lamb of God. Amen. You know where they go to kill sheep? You know what leads the sheep up to the killing block is a goat. But the goat will lead the sheep right up the chute at the slaughterhouse, and then just time he gets the sheep coming up the chute, then he'll jump out. But all they say when they're going to kill the goat, then he kicks up a storm. See? Yeah. And that's the way the devil will do. He'll try to lead God's children right into the meanest, but when it comes time for him to die, he really kicks up a storm. Man. That's the way the devil does it. And that's the way he sometimes... Some little fancy-looking girl or some little snickle-fritz boy with a pack of cigarettes or a bottle of whiskey would lead a little girl off a lamb of somebody's foal off to the wrong. Oh, it's all right. There's nothing all that goody-goody stuff about church. But let distract that old boy one time. You hear him squealing and holler all over the country. And that's the way the devil does it. But a lamb is so gentle that it can be led. And that's the reason that God represented Christ as the lamb and himself as the dove. And on the day that John baptized Jesus Amen. at the river of Jordan, one of the greatest events that had ever Amen. taken place, taken place right there. Notice how beautiful the Lamb, the meekest of all the creatures of the earth, and the dove, the meekest of all the fowls of heaven. Now that's the only way that they could ever be united. It's the only way that the dove would ever come on the Lamb. Now, when the dove came down, John saw Jesus and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that take Amen. away the sins of the world. Amen. And John said, I bear record, Amen. seeing the Spirit of God like a dove Amen. coming down and abiding Amen. on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There you are. The dove and the lamb united together. That's when God and man became one. That's when heaven and earth embraced each other. Hallelujah! That's when God was made flesh. That's when God came down from the spirit form and was made a man and dwelt among us. That's when all eternities embrace each other. That's when the human fallen Amen. race of Adam's people and Jehovah God and every angel Amen. come together. Hallelujah. When God and man was made one <clears throat> on that great memorial day when John baptized Jesus. Now, what if they would have been a wolf, the sweet cooing of the dove would 
have never been able to stand by the wolf. What is any prettier than late of the evening to hear the old turtle dove set out there and cool a while? Amen. After I lost my wife and baby, I wouldn't let no one know what I was doing. I used to get in my old car. I'd drive out across the road here, go out here at Walnut Ridge Graveyard, sit up there by the side of the tree and look down at the grave. I just couldn't give them up. Looked like I couldn't stand it anymore. I think my little baby laying there eight months old, how she used to hold her little hands and would reach for me and I'd blow the horn or say something to her and she'd goo goo, reach her little hands out. And I'd sit down by the side of the tree, especially when it would become evening. And there used to be an old dove that would sit out there in the bush. She would go to cooing. Oh, my! I once wondered if it was the immortal soul of my baby coming back to try to speak to me. Amen. Nothing sweeter than that cooing of the dove. How oh, she is loving. She brings tidings. How she tries to make peace. Get up early in the morning. Go out in the thickets there close to where I live. What a peaceful thing it is to listen setting up on their great tall trees, those doves cooing to one another. The other day down at Brother Cox's, an old mother dove had two little babies, and they sat right up on top of the building so the cats couldn't get them, and the old mother dove would feed them. Then she'd come down and get them and make them get up in the tree. And they would sit there with their necks around one another and coo and make love all day long, two little gentle baby doves. And I thought of how God, of the dove, is such a loving bird. And the dove, God, wanting to make love with His human beings. God wants to be loved. God wants to love you. Amen. God so loved the world. Amen. He gave His only begotten Son. Amen. And whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but to have everlasting life. Blessed be the Lord. Amen. Then, God wanting to make love, He had to some, make something lovable. Amen. He had to make something gentle like Himself. He had to make something that could be loved. He had to make something of His own nature. You couldn't love nothing that wasn't of your own nature. Loving has to unite with love. A husband and wife have to love one another if they ever make the grade. Family has to love one another if they ever make the grade. Amen. Something to be loved. You search everywhere, find a girl to be your wife that you love. She searches finding a husband that she can love. God searches trying to find a soul Amen. that he can love. So he represented himself here on earth as a gentle dove and a gentle lamb. If it, that lamb would have one minute ever taken on the nature of the snarling wolf, that dove would have took her flight immediately. She'd have got away. But the, the, the lamb, it doesn't have any great minds of its own. A lamb is one thing. When it's lost, it's hopelessly lost. A sheep can't find its way back. That's the reason the goat leads it to its death. It can't find its way. A sheep that's lost, that's the reason God likened us unto sheep. When we're lost, we're lost. There's no way we can find ourselves. Amen. There's only one way to do it. That's submit ourselves to the shepherd of the flock. And he does the lead. Amen. Now, as I notice this, Lamb and the sheep together. The lamb and the dove, brother, together. They made one. Then, watch how the dove led the lamb, the Son of God. How gentle he was, knowing that he was going to the slaughter. How gentle he was to always, not to try to do himself, not to try to be self-sufficient. He said, I do nothing 
until the Father shows me first, and the Father dwells in me. Now, another thing the Lamb is, the Lamb is willing to submit its rights. Now, God wants us to be lambs. But there's so many times that we don't want to submit our rights, forfeit our rights. So many of you say, well, I've got rights, Brother Brandon. That's true. But are you willing to forfeit your rights? Are you willing to give your rights that God could lead you? That's what's the matter with our churches today. In a great majority, that the gentleness of the Lamb of God, we are supposed to be lambs, we have become everything else but lambs. And that's the reason as soon as we get that attitude, the dove of the Holy Spirit takes her flight and leaves. If the Lamb of God would have made the first snore like a wolf, or would have done anything contrary to what the gentle dove would have permitted, the dove would have took her flight. Amen. She'd have left in a minute. And that's the reason today that we're wondering what's the matter with the Pentecostal church. It's because we have taken on a different nature. We've taken on a nature that we want our rights. We're going to do what we know it's right to do. And we become arrogant. We become hostile. We become indifferent. We let temper come in. We let selfishness come in. A lamb, when it comes time, he owns his own wool. That's his right. He owns his wool. But they take the lamb and throw him up on the blocks and tie his feet down. He never kicks. He never fusses. You just take his rights right away from him. Because he's a lamb. He can't do nothing else because that's his nature. But one time cross a Christian's path. You'll find out whether he's a lamb or a goat. You'll find out what he is. Cross him up one time. And that's the reason today that our churches is in the condition they are. We've called ourselves the Lamb of God. The women and the man together has begun to act everything but like lambs of God. You look at them going down the street with short bobbed hair, curly cues all in their hair, and a few years ago you call you that you couldn't have hired them to do that. And then you wonder why is it the church is in the condition it is is because you took the nature of a wolf or a goat instead of keeping the meek gentleness and some, you say that's my privilege, Brother Branham. I know it's your privilege. Barbers cut hair and as long as a barber will cut hair and I got right that's right. That's your American privilege, but are you willing to give it up to be a lamb? Are you willing to submit yourself? And you women, not long ago, you go down the streets, it's ridiculous to look the way the women dress today. And I'm not talking about Presbyterian and Methodists. I'm talking about you holiness women. Go down the street, and it's, I had a little cross hanging in front of my car. And somebody said to me, he said, Billy, you know that's a Catholic emblem? I said, when did the Catholics get the option on the cross? Never. That's not an emblem of Catholic faith. That's an emblem of Christian faith. A Catholic faith is a little dead saint, a Mary or, or some dead person that they worship. We don't worship dead people. We don't worship St. Cecilia and all those different saints. That's Catholicism, which is a high form of spiritualism. But the cross represents him who died and rose again. And I said, I keep that there. Looking on the streets 25 years ago, or 30, when I was almost blind, I promised God if he'd heal my eyes, I'd look at the right thing. And I said, they everywhere you look at some ungodly women half-dressed and naked women laying in the yards there were, I'll look at the cross instead of looking and remember what Christ did for me and turn my head to the thing. That's how the devil. Hallelujah. And that our people don't say that's Presbyterian and Catholic. That's Pentecostal. Amen. You say, I got a right to, Brother Brandon. That's right. But if you're a lamb, you'd forfeit your rights. Amen. And when you go to acting like that, the Holy Spirit, the gentle dove, takes her flight right away. She won't be disgraced with you. Amen. Oh, no, no. Amen. You never think you're going to act like that and keep the Holy Ghost. You can't do it. Amen. The Bible said so. You've got to far for your... Well, I say the rest of the women are doing it. And you, man, you poor little boneless, sissified things, you that would let your wife do such a thing as that. That shows what you're made out of. 
That's the reason you ain't got the Holy Ghost like you profess to have. Or you'd have enough something about you to make her act like a lady as long as she lived with you anyhow. Amen. Amen. That sounds old-fashioned cutting, but that's what the church needs today is an old-fashioned Holy Ghost washing yeah. out and hanging out and drying out and ironing out by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sure. What a condition the world's got into. How they get out on the street and carry on. How did you stick your head in a television on Wednesday night and won't go to church? How did you... What? There's a kid in the country knows all about who David Crockett is. And that dirty lie, saying he killed a bear at three years old. You know that's a lie. But you let your kids get their heads stuck full of that, and there isn't one percent out of one hundred that ever knows anything about Jesus Christ. It's because this world has become so polluted. This nation so ridiculous and so far from God has rejected the Holy Ghost. Oh, you say, I go to church and shout, you might do that. But until that gentle Lamb of God settles in your heart and makes you clean up your life and act like a different person, it won't do you any good to impersonate Christianity. You've got to have it. Amen. Amen. I went into a house, sure not long ago, to visit a sick man. And a lady was sitting there. And a little old Oswald come in, hat sitting on the side of his head, said, Mammy, is dinner ready? She said, Honey, the... We haven't had time, said, this morning to get any dinner, said, I'm fixing a sandwich, said, there's some oranges. He walked over, got a hold of an orange, looked at it, dipped into it, pulled it up against the wall as hard as he could, the juice run down, said, oh, that's all you got around this place and I'll get out. <laughs> oh, God, you ought to be mine for about five minutes. <laughs> Boy, I jerked the hide off of him like he'd never known it was jerked off. But them lay there pitying baby. What he needs is a good old-fashioned limb skinning. That's what we need, some old-fashioned homes again. And some preachers that will stand behind the pulpit and preach the truth and lay it down where it belongs to be laid. Amen. Amen. That's true. Oh, my. Little Mary stomp her little feet and stick that little nose up and turn them little bitty rose-colored lips by a Max Factor's Stuff up in the air and stick her little head up and walk out of the house. What a disgrace. How disobedient children are being. The Bible said they would be. Amen. The Scripture said they would be. How they would act. How they would do. And the things that's going on in the world today is because they have grieved away the Holy Spirit. A few years ago, I'm going down a few days to celebrate the first falling of the Holy Ghost in America. Fifty years ago, this year, at the old Azusa Street meeting, Pentecostal meeting in Los Angeles where they had their first falling of the Holy Spirit when the people got together. When Christ come down among those people, they were just as gentle, just as peaceful. They lived godly lives. They lived sacrificial lives. They were willing to give in. They were willing to be led by the Holy Ghost. They didn't care what the people said. They were old-fashioned. Where they said they were crazy or what about it? They were willing to be led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. But today, oh my, with a powder puff and a makeup box and a pair of shorts on and out on the street, why, it's a disgrace and calling themselves with the Holy Ghost. Oh, you say, but I spoke of tongues. Yes, and the devil does too. Oh, I shouted, and the devil does too. The devil can impersonate everything God's got except love, and he can't impersonate love. Yeah. And... The first thing you know when you started doing those things, you let down the bars, you begin compromising, then the church begin to get little clucks, clicks in among them, and this is said, you know, the pastor's just so-and-so, or the deacon's so-and-so. And the first thing you know, you listen to that, and that's the reason we've had so much trouble, is because you begin to listen to the devil and get a snarl instead of listening to the gentle devil. Amen. The Holy Spirit, the dove of God. That would lead you and Amen. guide you and love you and bless you. Amen. First time you get one of those little temper spasms, the dove flies right away. Amen. That's right. She can't stand it. Amen. Her nature is different. Amen. Oh, she can't stand that at all. And you go to talking about your neighbor, she can't stand that. Amen. She just won't put up with it. He just takes his flight and goes on away. He just can't stand it any longer. The Amen. dove is gentle. The dove is meek. And the dove... 
And, uh, and it can't stand on nothing unless it's the same kind of nature. Now, God can make you a different nature, man or woman. He can give you a different nature. And you say, well, Brother Branham, what can we do about it? Just become a lamb again. It's only two animals will ever associate together. That's the dove and the lamb. The dove won't come to anything else but a lamb. Amen. And if you become a goat, then get that old goaty spirit off of you. Amen. That's right. If you become something else, get it away from you. If you begin to become a tattler, here one time I preached just as hard as I could preach in a certain city. And there was thousands of people there. I made an altar call and I thought I covered the whole realm of sin. I covered everything that I could think of. That night after the service over, a very prissy little woman walked by. She said, well, Brother Adam, I'm sure glad that you didn't touch me tonight. I thought, that must be a real Christian. That you didn't touch me tonight. I said, well, I'm certainly glad to hear that lady. You must be close to the kingdom of God. And she tipped away some elderly lady standing there. I said, say, do you know that woman? Yes. I said, she must be a real Christian. Said one thing you failed to hit tonight, Brother Bram. That was gossip. She's the chief gossiper of the country. <laughs> there you are. That's it. See, but when you come to one of those things, no matter whether the preacher hits in the pulpit or not, when you see those carnal things of the world, as long as you tolerate with them, you're away from God and the Holy Spirit will stay away. Amen. That's the reason the meetings are not like they used to be. That's the reason the sawdust trail isn't boring this morning in the tabernacle. That's the reason the, the great tent meetings are not around the country. It's Amen. because we have breathed away the gentle dove of God. Amen. That's right. He Amen. won't stay with us as long as we're so different. As long as we're backbiting. We want our ways. Now, I want you to notice. The lamb was a silent lamb. The Bible said he opened not his mouth. Like a sheep before the shears, he was dumb. He didn't open his mouth. He wasn't a fellow that wants his rights. No, sir, he was willing to forfeit his right. He was a silent man. But today, oh, my, how we want our differences. Oh, my, I tell you, you just let somebody say something to me. I'll go over and get him, boy. I'll take him apart. I'll tell that old hypocrite when I see her. Just wait till I see her. Bless God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The dove just takes his flight and goes on away. That's right. The Holy Spirit's not with you anymore as long as you feel that way. Just mark that down in your book. It'll never do it. The Holy Spirit just won't stay around where that kind of a spirit is. Amen. It's got to be a lamb spirit, a gentle spirit, Amen. or just won't stay with it. That's all there is to it. If it ain't a gentle, me, led by the Holy Spirit, and if anything comes up, it just don't even notice it. It just goes on. See? And the very minute that it turns a sign, you know, that's a very... The, when you turn a sign, you know the first sin started of a person turning aside just for a minute? Amen. Did you know that? The Bible said so. Eve turned aside just a moment yeah. to hear what Satan had to say. And he painted the picture so pretty to her till she actually thought it was the truth. And she listened to him. Yeah. And the only thing the devil wants you to do is just turn aside just for a few minutes. He can paint the picture and say, now look here, you know, brother, you know, sister, if they were the right kind of people, they wouldn't do this. If they just did this right here, you know. He can make it so real to you until it becomes a real truth. Right. Amen. But remember, it's the devil. Amen. I don't care how low down they are, how far they've stooped in sin. It's your business to put an arm around them and lift Amen. them up by the love of God. Where was you when the devil of God lifted you out of Mary Clay? It's your business, my friend. This world of dying for a little bit of love. The, I want you to notice this animal too. This little animal... It was a silent lamb because it didn't, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. He didn't rail and carry on and fuss and stew and go on. He didn't do it. When somebody, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. He opened not his mouth. But you let somebody do something to you or me. Oh, my, we blow up like a toad frog eating buckshot. Puff out like, a, like an old goose. Well, I'll tell you right now. He stepped on my toes like that again. I'll never go back to that old church again. Oh, sir, bless God, hallelujah. The Nazarenes will receive me. The Pilgrim Holiness, they'll take me, hallelujah. I don't have to do it no more. All right, the dove takes its flight. Amen. Yeah. You know what? If that old hypocrite goes to that church, I'll never go again. Bless God, I'll never do it. 
When that thing strikes you, that old snarling wolf, the dove takes her flight. Yeah. Right. Then the Holy Ghost is gone. Amen. Then you wonder what's the matter with you. You wonder what's the matter with the church. You wonder what's the matter with you. Why ain't you got victory like you used to have? You change your nature. Amen. You become a goat instead of a lamb. Amen. You become something else besides a lamb. You've got to get that real meat spirit. Let the Holy Ghost lead me wherever. God, I love every sinner no matter where they Amen. are. That kind of a place get into you in my heart. Then you're going to see something happen. Your soul... You say, well, Brother Branham, is there any solution for it? Yes. Just become a lamb. Amen. That's all. You say, well, Brother Branham, I met a young lady the other night down street for it. Billy and I went out to a place to get a sandwich after service over. A beautiful young woman come in there, probably a young girl or maybe a 20 or something like that. Nice dress. She sat down. I know she kept looking across that way. I just kept on eating. A few minutes, the lady come in. She said, um, how did you spoke to her? And I know the lady was uh, Sister Davis down there. And um, her and another lady from Life Tabernacle. I knew them well. She came over and spoke to me and went on. Then the young lady sitting across, she said, Brother Bram, that was a nice message. And I said, how do you do, sister? I said, thank you very much. And I said, um, are you a member of the Life Tabernacle? She said, I am. She said, you know, Brother Bram, I could have sung in the choir, but they make a restriction down there. She said, I had... Oh, so many years of vocal training and everything. Said, I sang solos and I sang certain things. Said, but I, I couldn't sing because they have, a, they have a restriction that no woman wearing paint can slang, sing in the choir. I said, well, praise God for life tabernacle. She said, well, i tell you, Brother Branham. She said, uh, I'm a Christian. I said, then, sister, go home and wash your face or whatever you do. I said, do you mean to tell me that you left such a little thing as weren't a little that old... Of stuff on your face. Now I can prove to you that that come from the devil. I can prove to you that nothing in the, the original of it was heathens. And as long as you wear it, it's a mark of a heathen. Now I've just come back from Africa. Now I've been in the hot and top jungles and found out just exactly where earrings, where all that stuff comes and all this lot of jewelry and wrap around your neck and ears and everything, where that comes from, it's the heathens. And the Bible don't want a Christian to be a heathen. And you don't want, I don't say that you are a heathen because you do it, but you're making yourself look like one. It's because your pastor didn't tell you the truth. The Bible said so. And now you say, Brother Branham, I think if I got short hair, it makes me cool and everything like that. That's right. But if you got long hair, you'd be cooler. It'll take it all off your neck and wrap it up and make it right. Well, you know what the Bible said? That a man has a right to put away his wife and get a divorce from her if she cuts her hair. If she cuts her hair, it shows she's living untrue to him. The Bible said so. First Corinthians 12. Find out if it's not right. She, that a woman that cuts her hair, dishonors her head, which is her husband. And if she's dishonorable, she should be divorced and got away from. That's right. But see, the pastor never tells you those things. And that's the reason that you do the way you do. And, and the man... The Bible said here not long ago there was somebody wrote in and said, Brother Branham, the, these blouses that women get, said, well, it's such a, it, uh, you just can't hardly find blouses anymore. And it would be all right for us Christian women to wear these decrons, nylons, or whatever it is like that. I said, look, sister, there's one thing about it. There's one thing true. You can do this. If you can't buy one, they sell sewing machines. <laughs> you can make one. <laughs> I said, that's right. To make it look this I believe, you know, what's in your heart is what expresses itself. The way you do and the way you act, that shows what's in you. That's the reason that all this year snarling and fussing and backbiting and, and biting back and carrying on around the church, that's what breaks up the church. That shows that the devil got into you and that shows the Holy Ghost left you. Amen. Amen. Now, I know that's just burning the tar out of some of you, but it ought to do it. it ought to, that's what it's said for. Not to be smart, not to act cute, but to tell you where the trouble is. For someday I'm going to have to stand and give it an answer for you. Amen. And the very reason the way you do and the way you act, that shows what you are. Amen. If you just got an old temper that would fly off the handle just a little bit and get out here and carry on or criticize or vulgarity and stuff like that, that shows where it's coming from. Now there's only one thing to do, get that thing out of there. And the dove will come back to your heart. When the dove went out of the ark, she was turned out, but she come back and knocked at the dark door and told Noah let her in. 
the Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost wants to come in. Amen. That's the reason that the day that the Holy Spirit, He has gone from you forever. It's just sitting out there on the limbs of the tree somewhere, ready to fly itself back and to come into you and give you love and peace and joy like you used to have. Amen. Sure it is. Amen. He's ready to do it. He Amen. wants to do it. He's longing to do it. But you won't let him do it. Now, I'm not talking to you, stranger. I don't know what your pastor... I'm talking to the Brandon Tabernacle. Amen. I talk to you people from other churches. I'm talking to the Brandon Tabernacle. That's what's the matter around here. That's what makes the dove take his flight. Just let somebody just start a little something around the church. And the first thing, oh, is that so? Oh, did, you don't mean so. Right then the Holy Ghost goes, fly away. Amen. It just can't stand that kind of spirit. It, as long as that lamb nature leaves you, then the Holy Ghost is gone. Amen. That's right. And that's what's the matter today. Amen. That's the reason the people's in the condition they are. It's because they let the wrong spirit come into their heart, Amen. into their life. Now that's the reason we got, the Bible said that's the reason so many sick and afflicted among us. It's because of such things. We must be gentle. We must be peaceful. We must be a lamb so that the dove can abide with us. Now, remember, the dove will come. You said, oh, Brother Branham, don't tell me I never received the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Down the night there one night, oh, when he come in, I could just walk on. Sure, that was him. Oh, I felt so good. I felt like I could get every little bird out of the tree and hug it and love it. My wickedness person had ever done anything to me. I felt like I could put my arm around him and hug him. Oh, Brother Branham, how I felt. Sure, that was the Holy Ghost. But you see, the reason he couldn't abide, you was a lamb then, but when you become a wolf, you had Amen. to make his flying. Amen. Nothing wrong with the, with, the, with the dove. It's you. And the, you let that spirit come to you. Did I let it, Brother Brown? Yes. When you went to listen to that gossip. When you listened to that lie. When you went to say, well, I've got a right to. You haven't got no right. Amen. You're a bought with a price. Amen. That was the price of the precious Amen. blood of the Son of God. God. You have no legal rights. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only right you have is come to the fountain filled Amen. with blood. Drawing from him in those days. When sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stain. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. That's the only right you have. Is a surrendered self-will to God. And then God does the leading from then on. Amen. That's what causes the meetings. That's what causes so many strange things. The Holy Spirit will go to a place. The Holy Spirit said, this is not right. Stop the meeting. Move yonder. I'll stop it too, brother. Move right on. Amen. That's right. Because you've got to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. And the only way to be led by the Spirit of God is to keep gentle. Not to know a whole lot. Oh, you think I know a whole lot? Yeah, you get your brain all worked up and it can't even work itself. You know all the books and all the answers and all the Greek and all the Hebrew. Now, they got no place for the dove to roost. Amen. Right. But you know it all. Then the dove can't lead because you know too much. The lamb don't claim to know nothing. It's got to have somebody else to lead it. Amen. That's it. Don't know nothing. Amen. The only thing I know is Christ Jesus died to save me. Amen. Down through California is a guy coming, had a sign on the front of him said, I'm a fool for Christ. And on the back said, whose fool are you? <laughs> Amen. That's right. Become a fool to the world that you might be led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because the sons and daughters of God are led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Romans 8, 1 said, there's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus that walk not after the flesh, but the Spirit. Amen. Walk not after the wolf, but the dove. Amen. Amen. Doc used to sing a song. Fill my way every day with love as I walk with the heavenly dove. Let me go all the while with a song and a smile. Fill my way every day with love. Amen. What a peaceful day it'll be for the Branham Tabernacle or any other church or any individual when they'll forfeit their rights Amen. to become a lamb. Praise. What's the question, Brother Branham? Come back to a lamb. Come back to be gentle. Come back to know nothing. Come back to just submit yourself to Christ. Don't try. Don't try to know nothing. Just walk meekly, quietly, humbly, gently, and the dove will lead you. But whenever you see, go to listen to that gossip, whenever you go to get that temper up, whenever you go to thinking you've got a right to do this and do that, the dove just takes your flight and goes on away. Amen. Then you don't have it anymore. 
Now, she's not very far from me this morning, church. She's sitting right out there on a limb of peace, Amen. waiting for your nature to be changed. Praise Amen. Amen. What you need today is to submit all your rights. It's to let God lay you down and shave all your rights off of you. Amen. <laughs> Could you imagine how a little old lamb all, fe- all fleece hanging over him? That's his rights, yeah. <laughs> Burn it up and then just lay up on the shearing table. They know what's best for him. Take all of his rights away from him, shear it all. How cool and light he runs. My, my. He's happy and jumps around and has a big time. Yes, sir. If you forfeit your rights, that's what you get. But you got to forfeit your rights and let the Word of God shave all the world off of you. Take all the habits of the world away. And you become a new creature in Christ. Here some time ago over in Africa, I was talking to, a, to an old saint. He said, Brother Brandon, I know you believe in the supernatural. And I said, certainly, my brother. He said, years ago, I used to think I was somebody. He said, I thought I was really a Christian. And he said, then up in our church, I had to climb a hill where I stopped my little car. He said, I had to climb a hill about, all oh, three or four hundred yards to get around the bushes and things getting up. And said, we'd have a prayer meeting up there. And said, I thought I was really a Christian. He said, I know all the Bible. I studied all the Hebrew. I studied all the right pronunciations of the words. And said, anybody walk up to me, I could talk to him like that about the Bible. I know what I was talking about. He said, one night I was going up to church. There had been a lot of conflict in our church. said, there's little parties against one another. You know how I raised? I said, yes, sir. He said, oh, my road up the hill, I was walking. And all at once I become conscious that somebody was following me. And said, I thought I'd wait just a little bit for whoever it was to catch up. And I talked to him a little while as we went up the road. You know, that's kind of a good thing. You just wait a little while. And says, as I walked up the hill, so I come up, a man come up the hill and said he had a bundle on his back that was way bigger than the man. And said he was just a panting and a blowing and a making his little short steps trying to get up. And I said, fella, can I help you pack this load up the hill? He said, no, I got to pack it. So I looked at his hand. So I knew that it was a vision. He had scars in his hand. So I fell down and I said, Lord, are you packing the sins of the world in that sack? He said, no, I'm just packing yours. Just getting you up the hill. Just so you can get up. That's the way it is. If we just look around, we find out he's packing ours. Just, doesn't it make you feel little? Our wicked, cruel heart. Just because we can do it. There some time ago, I was hunting. As you know, I love to hunt. And there was a wicked guy in that country. He was a wicked fella. And he used to make fun of me because I wouldn't shoot does and fawns. I said, it's brutal. I said, won't you be a real clean hunter? And shoot the old bucks and things that's old and ready to die. God gave them to us. Let them young mothers and saints. He said, oh, you're a chicken-hearted preacher. Kept telling me like that. I said, now look. If I was hungry and I wanted one of those fawns, I believe God would let me have it. But just to shoot it, just to act smart, wait, fill a wagon up. And he went and made him a call, some kind of a whistle. And he could blow that whistle and sound just exactly like a little fawn calling. One day we was in the bushes together. I shamed him. I said, I'd be ashamed of myself. Killed eight or ten fawns one time if you could. Doors and everything, just to act smart. Maybe cut the hindquarters off and leave the rest of it lay there. I said, you are, oh, I said, you preachers are too chicken-hearted. One day he stood back in the bushes and he took hold of this whistle and he screamed and sounded like a little fawn crying. Just as he did that, a beautiful doe stuck her head out, come stomping out. You could see her big brown eyes looking. She was startled. She was looking around. The hunter raised down, pulled up his rifle to shoot the doe. And the doe seen the hunter. But you know what? That scream of that fawn, she didn't notice that gun. She was looking for that baby. It was in trouble. You know, that display of real motherhood and mother love, that she faced that gun in the face for death, looking at that in the muzzle of that gun. You know what? That display was so great, it got next to him. 
He threw down his gun. He ran back and grabbed me around your arm. He said, Billy, pray for me. I've had enough of this. Amen. When you see that display of mother heroism, Amen. oh, when the world sees the display of the love of God in the gallop Amen. in our human heart, what a difference it'll be. When we let the dove of God come to our heart and gentleness make us meet. There in that brush harbor back there, we stand there praying for that old boy. I led him to the Lord Jesus. From then on, he was a good, clean hunter. Amen. Sure, he thought he had a right. He'd do what he wanted to. That's on my place. They eat my alfalfa down there if they want to. I said, that's your right. But it's unhuman to do that. You've got to forfeit your rights. Oh, God, have mercy that we will. Here some time ago, in, oh, about a hundred years ago, there was a great Christian living in the southwest of the United States. His name was Daniel Curry. A wonderful man. A godly man. A sainted man. A real Christian. A man that everybody thought so much of. Such a wonderful person. And the story goes that he died or went into a trance. And he said, if he went up to heaven, of course, when he died. And when he got to the pearly gates, the caretaker come to the door said, who are you? He said, I'm the evangelist, Daniel Curry. I've won thousands of souls to Christ. And I'm, I want to come in this morning. My life's journey is ended on earth. I have no place to go now. That's the way it's coming to you some morning, sinner. That's the way it's coming to you, backslider. That's the way it's coming to you is grieve the Holy Spirit away from them. Not be gentle and tender anymore. You haven't cried for years. You haven't blushed right on the wind. All modesty is gone from you. Sure. But it's going to come to your door one of these mornings. And as the gentle Holy Spirit comes and knocks, why don't you just let him in? So when Daniel Curry come there to, to, to the gate, they went in and said, we'll see if you got your name here. They looked all around. They couldn't find any name. Said, no, there's no Daniel Curry here. Oh, he said, surely. He said, I'm an evangelist. He said, I've won souls to Christ. He said, I've tried to do the thing that's right. The caretaker said, sir, I'm sorry to tell you, but there's no Daniel Curry here. He said, I'll tell you what you might do. He said, we have no rights here to take your case. He said, but do you want to appeal your case? You can appeal it to the white throne judgment if you want to. But said, we have no mercy here for you at all. Because we don't have you here. There's no mercy for you. Said, do you want to appeal your case? He said, sir, what more can I do but appeal my case? He said, well, then you can go to the White Throne Judgment and appeal your case there. Daniel Curry said that he felt himself going through the space for about an hour. Said he come into a place that got lighter, 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 lighter. He said, farther he went, the lighter it got. It was a hundred times, thousands of times brighter than the sun ever shined. And said so he was trembling, trembling. And said when he got in the middle of that light, he heard a voice say, Was you perfect on earth? Just come out of the vault, a light. He said, No, I wasn't perfect. Got trembling. Said, did you always play honest with everybody? Said, no. Said, a few things come to my mind that I wasn't just exactly honest about. Said, no. I, I, I guess I wasn't honest. Said, did you tell the truth in every case in your life? Said, no. I remember some things I told that wasn't shady. It was shady. I, I, I never was truthful just exactly. Said, Ben, did you ever take anything that did not belong to you? Anything? Money? Anything else that didn't belong to you? Said, he thought on earth that he was pretty good. But he was condemned. Said, no. No. I've took things that didn't belong to me. He said, then you wasn't perfect. He said, no. I wasn't perfect. Said he was looking any minute for the blast to come from that great light from where the dove rested. Condemned! He said just then, 
He heard a voice behind him that was sweeter than any mother's voice he'd ever heard. Said he turned to look, and the sweetest face he'd ever saw, sweeter than any mother's face, is standing before him. And said he said, Father, Daniel Curry stood for me down on earth. It's true he wasn't perfect, but he stood for me. He stood for me on earth. Now I'm going to stand for him in heaven. Take all of his sins and put them over on my account. Who's going to stand for you that day, brother? If he grieve him away from me today. I just can't preach anymore. Let's bow our heads. Dear God, dear dying man, meek, humble, lowly, the birds had nest, the foxes had den, but you didn't have a place and yet the very Lord of glory. When you were born, they didn't have any clothes to put on you. Oh God, what good does my clothes do me then? What good does my cars do me? What good does a nice home do me? What good is it going to do that day? You was friendless. No one would friend you. No one seemed to want to give you a helping hand. You said that day you said I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was naked. You wouldn't clothe me. What good's all we got going to do it that day, Lord? Let us stand for you. So that when that hour comes and we walk into his presence, the omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipotent. Oh, God. When we hear that dove with his wings setting back there in that great light, that will flash through all eternity. When you dwell in light, when I have to stand there by myself, my brother's gone, my pastor's gone, my mother's gone, my daddy's gone, my wife's gone, my kiddies are gone. Oh, God. What am I going to do then, Lord? What am I going to do then? That may be before the sun goes down tonight. But what am I going to do? What can I do? Oh, Christ, I'll stand for you now. I'll take my choice today. I'll forfeit all my talking about other people. I'll forfeit all my temper. I'll forfeit all my differences. I'll forfeit everything. Shear me off, Lord. Thank all I got. Thank me, Lord. I, I, I want to stand in your place. I want to be sheared. I want all selfishness, all pride, all indifference. It's all taken off of me. And I want to stand for you as a sheared lamb. Willing to give up all the pleasures of what they call pleasures of life. All the dances, all the parties, all the old vulgar clothes, makeup, lipstick, fingernail polish, all the indifference it looks like the world you said don't even act like the world don't even associate with the world come out from among them oh god help me lord cheer me today take me like a lamb let me be dumb don't open my mouth and say nothing about it just stand and be sheared oh god what difference it makes i remember when you sheared me once Took my wife, my baby, my daddy, my brother. Just sheer to clean. Yet in my heart I knew I loved you. How you blessed me, how good you've been. All that I am, all that I could be, all that I have would be. It's you, God, it's you. I confess my wrongs. I confess all that I've ever done or thought. Just cheer me off, Lord. I want to be your lamb. Not only that, Lord, but take every person in here this morning. Every sheep. And those who would want to be sheep. Sure, all of them off this morning, Lord. Put their little feet around the stalks of the gospel. 
May the Holy Spirit lead them to repentance just now. Know that they've been indifferent towards God. And may He sure all the indifference of all the world and all the things of the world. Just sure it all off this morning, Lord. That we can stand cool and quiet before You as born again Christians. Read it, Lord. I love You. I want to go no matter whether the weather's hot or whether it feel like it or not. I want to go. I want to stand for you. God, I want you to plead my case that day. Say, well, he stood for me. I'll stand for him. Oh, God, grant it today. And while every head is bowed and every heart's bowed, I wondered this morning if there'd just be someone here who realize that you tried to have your own way. You made these things that you shouldn't have done. And you just feel this morning you like for the Lord just to shear you off and say, make you a real lamb. Would you raise your hand? God bless you, lady. God bless you, brother. God bless you, brother. Someone else say, shear me, Lord. I'm standing. I'm a sheep. I won't even open my mouth. I just want you to cut all the world away from me. God bless you, brother. God bless you, lady. God bless you, sonny boy. God bless you, lady. God bless you, sister. Surely, Lord. Sister Gertie. God bless you, lady. God bless you, sister. Share me now, Lord. I want all the things that were. I want to stand for you this morning. I want to stand as a shore and sheep. I want all the things of the world cut away from me. I want to be yours and you be mine. Will you receive me, Lord, as I raise my hand to you? God bless you, lady. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, lady. God bless you, lady. I see her. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, little lady. That's good. God bless you, back there, my brother. God bless you, sister. That's right. Just be honest. I want God to take all away from me. It's just not like Him. Any selfish motives I have, any indifference that I have, I want Him to share me all the way off this morning. I want to be like Him. I don't care whether they're rights or not. I ain't got no rights. I only have one right, and that's come to Him. He takes the rest. Is there a sinner here that's never once confessed Christ, never been saved, and you want to be remembered in this prayer this morning? Would you raise your hand, sinner friend? God bless you. Another one, raise your hand. Say, remember me, Brother Branham. I'm not a Christian. I don't know just what time I'm going to have to meet God. And I, I want to be remembered right now in a word of prayer as you close. What, will you raise your hand for me to pray for you? He said, God bless you, little lady. God bless you, lady. God bless you, sir. Amen. Someone else? I want to be. I want the, How many here that's backslidden? Oh, you say, I wouldn't admit that, Brother Branham, but look. If that dove of meekness has gone from you, brother, there's something wrong. There's something wrong when you can't bear with one another. When you can't forgive every person from the very depths of your heart. No matter what they've done or what they've said. If you can't forgive them from the depth, Jesus said, if you don't forgive every man, his trespasses from your heart, neither does your heavenly Father forgive you. Amen. And what if this hot weather... What if today God had called you? While there's a fountain open, a church ready, the Holy Spirit sitting here at the Gabriel end of this building, ready to come right down and come back in your heart and make you gentle and peaceful. What must I do, Brother Bram? Just become a lamb. The Holy Spirit will come right down when you become a lamb. But if you've got the wrong motives, the wrong, wrong idea, want to have your own way, you're not willing to forfeit it, then the Holy Spirit will never come. Now with our heads bowed, I wonder if any of you that's raised your hands. Now Jesus said, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life. Shall never come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. St. John 5, 24. But now if you'd like to come to the altar, kneel down here, let's pray together. To that gentle, peaceful feeling that you once possessed or would like to possess comes to you again. While we were keeping our heads bowed, while we sing, there is a fountain filled with blood, I want you to come kneel down and pray. Everyone now that wants to come, kneel down here at the altar rail and pray a while. There is a fountain Thank you. 
and he'd come right up and kneel down. Luke. With your heads bowed, as I hope you have in your heart, you know who breaks down the aisle this morning? I want to make you shame yourself. A colored woman. Poor thing, swelled up ankles. Gray hair. Makes her way down to the altar. Here some time ago, an old colored man got saved. In the slave time. He went and as he was saved, he told his boss he is free. He said, you're what? said, I'm free. Then he made him free. Here comes another group of people coming down for salvation this morning. Say he was free. Everybody in prayer and praying hard, if you will, while the Holy Spirit deals with the people, making a decision. He said, Moses, do you say you was free? He said, yes, sir, boss, I'm free. He said, if you're free, then I'm going to make you free, too, to go preach the gospel. When he got ready to die, many of his white brethren come in to see him. When they did, he said, thought he's in a coma. When he woke up, he said, I thought I was gone. God bless you, my brother. Just kneel right down. He said, I thought I was already gone. So what did you see, Mose? He said, when I walked in the gate, I saw him. He said, I stand looking at him. He said, there's an angel come up and said, come on, Mose. You done preach the gospel many years. You got a robe and a crown waiting for you. You said, don't talk to me about robe and crowns. I don't want no robe and crown. I just want to look at him. I think that's the attitude of any Christian. Here some time ago, way up out of Chicago, I was in a coliseum, a museum rather. I was looking all around in there. I seen an old Negro little white rim of hair around his head, moving around there with his hat in his hand. I looked at him. He looked over into a little place, and he jumped back, and tears began to run down his old dark cheeks. He started praying. I watched him for a little while. He looked over again and started crying again. I walked over, and I said, Sir? He said, Yes, white friend. I said, I see you. What excited you so? What are you so excited about? He said, Sir, if you could feel my side, I got a calluses around my side. He said, I once was a slave. He said, In this little glass cage here, that's a dress laying there. I said, I see it's a dress, but what's so peculiar about that? He said, That spot on there, I said, that's the blood of Abraham Lincoln. He said, That blood taking the slave belt off of me. He said, Now, white man, wouldn't it kind of excite you too? I put my arm around his old neck. I say, God bless you, brother. I know another blood excites me. He said, I know that blood too, mister. I said, he took a slave belt off of me. One time I'd get out on Sunday and race and carry on, tell dirty jokes. Oh, God, how did I do it? Still, these scars down in my heart weren't done. But I'm glad he took the belt off of me. It's all gone now. He stood in my place. Here's some time ago looking at a woman and she's so vulgar. I want to condemn her. God gave me a vision. I prayed for her then. For I see that my sins are as great as hers. And I walked over and sat down by the side of her and shamed her. Told her I was a minister. Her two boyfriends, she's about 65 or 70. Her two boyfriends knelt down there and they all give their heart to Christ. Hey. Oh my. What a difference. Won't you? Have you just sinned so much this morning? Have you just got your heart so black and smutty till even the Holy Spirit can't even touch it? Maybe the dove has tucked its eternal flight. It's gone forever. God bless you, honey, a little girl walking up. God bless you, sweetheart. You say that little girl doesn't know. Oh, yes, she does. She just hasn't read as many magazines and old love stories as you all have. That's what's the matter. She's tender. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come to me. 
Someone else would like to come join around this morning? The altar's open just another moment. Then while we sing once more, then we're going to offer prayer while these penitent sinners are praying. The dying thief rejoice to see that done in. Sure, everything was gone, the poor fellow was finished. And there may I go by as he. Won't you come up now? Won't you come up, you who know better? The Bible said if you know to do good, do it not to you. It's more than sin. Won't you come? You know you're wrong. Make your way up and kneel around the altar and tell God you're sorry for the way you've treated him. Let the Holy Spirit come back, make you meek and gently quiet again. Won't you? Remember, if you die and he's gone for you, be nobody to plead your case. He's wanting you to stand for him this morning. God bless you, my brother. Waiting. Is this it? There's 15 in the church that really feels that you've been condemned. You've lived a peaceful, meek, gentle, quiet life. Now this is directed by the Holy Spirit. You're forgiving. Have no image. Living a past above the condemnation of sinners. You don't live like the heathens. You live different. Your life's all patterned different. The gentle Holy Spirit sitting on the throne of your heart making you live peaceful and quiet and loving around all people. Your neighbors and all know and all your associates know that you're a gentle, quiet, meek, humble Christian. The dove of God is with you. Be sure this may be your last opportunity. All right. And to you here at the altar, God bless you. You won't have to be judged now. The Holy Spirit's brought judgment to you. You didn't try to hold your rights. Oh, I've been a Christian long enough. I don't have to go. Some of you are first time to ever be at the altar. I can stay a sinner if I want to. That's my rights. Yep, that's right. You're a free moral agent. You can act any way you want to, but you forfeited your rights this morning. Say, what would they say, me professing Christianity? They ain't going up to the altar. What would they say but what God's saying? He said for you to come. And you did it. Now you've forfeited your rights. You come to have the gentle Holy Spirit to take its place in your heart today. I know He'll do it. I know He will. He promised He will. There, he just can't help it. He just can't help from coming. He's begging, crying, died, and everything else for a place to come to. Wanting to come to you. And in your hours of death, when the death angel is sitting on the foot of the bed, instead of looking out there at a hideous thing and know that you refused to come one time, and then your soul become black and smutty. No more time. No matter how hard you cried, Esau sinned away his sin of grace. His day of grace, rather. And didn't get a chance. He wept bitterly trying to find a place to make it right, but he couldn't do it. God called him the last time. But you forfeit all your rights and all your friends and all your feelings and everything this morning to come here. You forfeit your rights and kneel down here to talk to God. I'm telling you by the word of the Lord that Christ said, He that comes to me, I want to know why it's cast out. Now while you're there on the altar, repent. Tell Him that you're sorry you did what you did. That's what's the matter. People don't receive the Holy Ghost when they're baptized. They just don't thoroughly repent. God's trying to give them the Holy Ghost. He wants you to be meek and gentle and quiet. That's the reason you get up with that same selfishness in your heart. Oh, you might get up shouting, speaking in tongues, or anything. that wouldn't make you have the Holy Ghost. You got to get up and marry a different person. You got to get up and marry gentle, quiet, meek, humble. God's Spirit dwelling with you. Next year, look back down the trail and see how far you've come. See, you're gaining ground all the time. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness, patience, faith. 
I just repent and tell God you want that right now. He, he'll do it. Little girl, you there, honey, you do the same thing. Bless you, your mother standing with her hands on you. This dear old colored sister here, bowing at the altar. You might have had to eat corn pone, some hominy grits. Might have had to live in an alley for all I know, sister. God bless your heart. There's a palace prepared for you in glory this morning. Right? Look on down the altar and see a lady turning gray, a young woman with her head down, a solid white-haired woman. Oh, God. See man kneeling. Different ones along here. Just repent, tell him you're sorry. Tell him you won't do it no more. By his grace, you just let all your differences be done from the day on. You want to be gentle and quiet. You want to be humble and go where he leads you. When people say something, no matter how right it looks, you go to forfeit your rights to talk about your neighbor. You go talk, you go talk about Jesus, you're just going to do the thing that's right. You ain't going out like a murderer. You ain't going out to jump on the innocent. But you see that gallant play, the heroism of real Christians, and you want to be like them. You won't have to tell anybody you're a Christian if you are one. They'll just see it and know it as you talk. You're sealed inside now. Now, as you humble your hearts, repent now. Tell God you're sorry. You won't do it no more. You're ashamed of yourself the way you've acted. And then I'm going to pray for you. And I believe right then, peace will just settle over your heart. Just peace like a river will come flowing down to your souls. You might not be shouting. You might not be speaking with tongues. You might not be jumping up and down. But you'll leave away from the altar with something in you. Something in you that'll anchor you to the old rugged cross as long as you live. I pray as I do, confess. Our Heavenly Father, unworthy creatures, this hot, sweaty room this morning, the sweat box. But God, you sweated it out of us. The Holy Spirit come down. Convince people that they were wrong, they were sinning. Their spirits were arrogant. They become hostile, snoopy, know-it-all, not willing to repent, not willing to forgive people that had done things against them. They wasn't willing to. But today, the Holy Spirit took the Word of God, placed it right in their gentle hearts, and said, Now do you want to come back to where you was the first time you come to the altar? Come back to where everybody, you love everybody? And you love me with undying love? Then just rise up and come up the altar. They did it, Lord. And I pray now that you'll sanctify their thoughts, Lord. Sanctify their hearts and make them gentle and peaceful. May they rise from this altar now after they have repented, given their lives over to you. Go back to their homes. No matter whatever takes place, if husband gets all upset or wife gets upset or the neighbor's upset or some in but that you're working with or associating with, I'll just be gentle like a dove. After all, your vintage belongs to you. I will repay, saith the Lord. Amen. How we found that to be so, Lord. Just stand still. Be gentle. See God take come right down to his lamb. Sure. Certainly. This good shepherd give his life for them. He come right down to his sheep and he'll guide them. One to that one that crosses them up. One to that one that says one word against them. Said it'd be better that a millstone was hanged at your neck and drowned in the depths of the sea. There are angels always beholds my Father's face which is in heaven. Like, oh God, we want, and if you do to them, you do to me. So God, I want to be gentle. I put myself on the altar too this morning. Not this morning, but every morning and every day. I want to be quiet and gentle and like Jesus. Granted, Father, help us to be so now. Let the fabulous billows of love roll over our soul. Peace. Wonder. Coming down 
from the Father above. Don't you feel it down here? For my spirit forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Gertie said, tell all the church, she's condemned too, but she's making the piano her altar. That's the altar, the piano's her altar. She said, tell the church, pray for me. And she sits there and the tears running down on her glasses. This pulpit's my altar. I've repented too, my Bible wet. Oh, God, peace of God. Coming down from the Father above. sinned against anybody, against you. Take it away, Lord. Take the sin away from my little churches, Lord. How many can just feel that God's forgive you and the dove of peace sets on your heart again? She flew back just now, took up her place. The Holy Spirit just moved back to the child of mine. I've been wanting to love you all the time. You just wouldn't let me do it. I can't dwell with your old selfish spirit. But now that you've surrendered it, I'll come back to your heart this morning. How many feels that way? Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. That's right. All on the altar. Oh, that's fine. How many out in the audience feels that way? Raise up your hand. Oh, Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this time of soft consecration, like taking an apple in the hand, mashing it, bruising it, until it becomes mellow. So mellow that a little baby could sit down and eat it. That's why we want our hearts, Lord. Take it in your nail scar and just bruise it. Say, child, don't you see you've hurt me? You was hurting me when you flew loose to the hand like that. You were hurting me. Oh, my heart just bled for you, child. When I seen you do such and such things. But now that I've got your heart in my hand, I want to make it real meek. I want to make it so that I can use it and live in it. I want to fly back on the roost this morning. I want to fly back... And a bold, make my abiding with you. Grant it, God. We love you. Grant it for your glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. To be like Jesus. To don't you love just to worship like this? Oh, my soul is just bathing on earth. Just seem to come down to the, the worshipers like this. Your heart feel real gentle. My heart just beating fast. Journey from earth to glory. I Raise your hand while we sing it. To be like Jesus. To be like Joe, you want to come?
come up and pray this morning, brother. God bless you. Find your place right at the altar, brother Joel. God bless you. Here.
He'll feel his glory in there. God bless you, lady. God bless you, lady. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That's right. The Holy Spirit's always right. Come on. That's right. Move right out. Because these people have humbled themselves 
You said if the people is called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, then I'll hear from heaven. And I know you do this morning, God. And I pray forgiveness for those who remained in their seats that should have come. God, speak to them, and may they have no peace no more on earth until they have made that decision, Lord, to come and to be made right with you. Grant it, Lord. Bless each one now. May thy kindness and thy mercies ever abide on each soul that's pitted and bowed in this church this morning. Father God, I have did this at your bidding. I have called these people. They have stood. You said, He that will witness me before man, him will I witness before my Father and the holy angels. Many of these here have been Christians for years, but they're standing this morning to testify their sins that they have did wrong. They have become unlovable. The Holy Spirit has went from them. And many times that they can't feel that gentle, sweet, meek feeling that they ought to feel. Many of them are sinners that's come for the first time. But, Father, they want that wonderful feeling, that peace that passes all understanding. Give it to them this day, Lord God. And may they all together be lovely and full of thy spirit as they leave this place today. To go to their different homes, to live a different life, and to be a different people. We ask this in Christ's name. All right. You that's at the altar, raise up. Look up to the Lord God. Turn around and shake hands with everyone around you. Or we're going to sing everyone now while we stand just a moment for the healing service. Yes, there is room. There's room at the fountain for thee. A room. There's room at the called up to be prayed for you, went right in the room and the Holy Spirit said to me, don't fear. Amen. 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 Isn't he real? Wonderful. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I just feel like shouting the victory up. All right. And it's the worship spot. That's what I'm saying. Everybody has received this morning. Glory, Everybody hallelujah. looks like that we're believing God now. Hallelujah. Feel this good blessing and anointing up here on the platform. Feel like Peter, if it wasn't for the selfishness, let build three tabernacles and remain <laughs> here. Amen. This is wonderful. Everybody has received. Now everybody stand to our feet. Amen. Remember the services tonight. We have foot washing and communion service. Do you know whether you'll be I'll probably be here tonight, too. I'll probably be down yeah, tonight. As far as I know, I'll be here unless we call out. Amen.